Located in northern Italy, the city of Milan is the second largest metropolitan area in the country. It's a major commercial and financial center and famous for being one of the world's most influential fashion capitals. From museums to fine dining and sightseeing, we're sure you'll find something to love about this incredible European city. Fucation presents the best things to do in Milan, Italy. Duomo di Milano the Duomo is a prominent Gothic cathedral that happens to be the largest in the city. The cathedral's full name is officially the Metropolitan Cathedral Basilica of the Nativity of St. Mary. It took almost six centuries to build between 1386 and 1965, and the end result is nothing short of remarkable. Of course, you can always go inside and admire the interior. A small fee is required, but we highly recommend it. Inside, you'll find the world's largest Gothic vaults, in addition to beautiful stained glass windows, gold adorned altars, ornate sarcophagi, and marble statues. One of the most intriguing, albeit somewhat disturbing statues, is one that depicts St. Bartholomew holding his flayed flesh. The most revered and famous relic held at the cathedral, however, is a nail that is believed to be one of those used to crucify Jesus. A celebration is held annually around this relic that's called the Rito della Nivola. Underneath the Duomo, accessible through its interior, is the archaeological area. Here you can see what has been excavated so far of the baptisteries of Santa Tecla and St. John, which are said to date back to the 4th century AD. Another area worth visiting is the Duomo's roof terraces. While this does indeed require an additional fee, it's worth it for the phenomenal views. The roof is enormous and filled with gothic spires. You can reach it by taking an elevator or the stairs. The Duomo is also home to a museum that houses a large number of artworks, relics, and other elements connected to the cathedral. This is a great pit stop before or after visiting the rest of the cathedral. Galleria Vittorio Emmanuel II For another great architectural spot, a visit to this shopping arcade is a must. While you likely might not be able to afford anything for sale inside, you can still take some time to appreciate its beautiful construction. This shopping arcade can be found in central Milan. It's dripping with opulence and houses premium brands, luxury boutiques, and tastefully arranged window displays. The rooftop, especially the giant central dome, is one of the best examples of 19th century glass and iron architecture in the city. Da Vinci's The Last Supper this is one of the most renowned paintings in the world. Leonardo's The Last Supper may have been reproduced innumerable times, but there's nothing quite like seeing the original. Head to the Dominican convent of Santa Maria delle Grazie. The world-famous mural can be found at the end of the convent's dining hall. Only a limited number of people are granted entry at once. As such, tickets need to be booked in advance. It's also worth noting you're expected to arrive in modest attire. Scala Theatre Museum this theater is revered for being one of the most famous performance spaces in the world. The Scala features magnificent woodwork and an iconic red velvet interior. Fortunately, you don't need to make ticket reservations in advance to show your appreciation for this famed venue. Visitors to the Scala Theater Museum get to look inside at the theater's red velvet and gold interior. The museum also includes a vast collection of costumes, props, busts, and other objects related to theater and opera. Of course, the best way to see the theater is to attend a live performance. Castello Sforzesco in the Middle Ages, various regions of Italy were ruled by different sets of rich and powerful families. In Milan, the House of Sforza were the main ruling family between 1450 and 1535. They built the enormous Castello Sforzesco on top of the site that once held a 14th century castle. This beautiful structure was built to be the residence of the head of the Sforza family. As you can imagine, no expense was spared. It was designed with both aesthetic and defensive roles in mind. With its sturdy brick construction, the castle features imposing structures like thick defensive walls and towers. Back then, it was one of the biggest fortresses in all of Europe. It was meticulously decorated by some of the most renowned artisans of the time, including Bramante and Da Vinci. Today, a relatively large portion of the castle still stands and is open for tours. The grounds are free for anyone to visit, but for a fee, you can also visit any of the castle's eight museums. They can be found inside the castle itself. The museums cover a large range of topics, including Renaissance-era art, ancient art, Egyptian artifacts, musical instruments, and archaeology. Inside, you'll find everything from paintings to statues to sarcophagi to ancient coins. There's even a sizable collection of weapons and suits of armor. Navili Canal District Venice isn't the only European city known for its canals. 
Milan is home to the continent's oldest artificial canals, which are said to date back to the 12th century. They were once used as major waterways for irrigation and transportation, but the majority of the canals were closed down by the 1930s. Today, the Naviglio Pavese, Naviglio Grande, and Martisana canals are beloved for their cultural and industrial heritage. The district has become one of Milan's liveliest areas. It's home to cafes, bars, restaurants, and bakeries. We highly recommend coming out to sample the Lombardy specialty, also buco, which consists of braised lamb shanks. San Siro Time is running low to see the famed San Siro Stadium, which will be demolished shortly after the 2026 Winter Olympics. It's one of the most iconic soccer stadiums in the world, and it's shared by Italian giants Internazionale and AC Milan. Soccer fans from all around the globe visit this famous arena to take a tour or to attend a match. It consistently appears on the top of lists of Milan's most popular attractions. Parco Sempione this gorgeous 95-acre public park was designed in the style of a traditional English garden. It can be found next to the Castello Sforzesco and was established in 1888. It was designed with the intention of providing visitors with panoramic views of the nearby castle as well as the Arch of Peace. It's a lovely park that features many sculptures, ponds, and plenty of green space to relax on. There are also several old trees perfect for catching a little shade on a hot summer day. The park is popular with locals, especially on the weekends during warmer months. You'll find numerous vendors, ice cream and espresso carts, drum circles, musicians, children's playing, and families enjoying picnics. Inside the park is the 354-foot-tall Branca Tower. The structure offers panoramic views from atop its viewing station and is named after the Branca Liquor Company. An elevator takes you to the top where you'll be treated to some of the best views of the city. You can purchase your tickets in advance online. Also within the park is a museum dedicated to design and architecture called the Trianal. Pinacoteca de Brera Being the primary public gallery in Milan, this facility showcases Italian paintings from the 13th to 20th centuries. The site is also home to several thousand students attending one of Italy's premier art academies. A few highlights from the gallery include the works of Caravaggio and Raphael and the breathtakingly beautiful courtyard, which is free to visit. Lake Como for a great day trip idea, consider taking a journey to explore one of Italy's most scenic spots, Lake Como. The lake is nestled in the foothills of the Alps, just 50 kilometers north of Milan, and it's easily accessible via train, departing from the Central Station or Corduccio Station. After arriving at the small town of Como, you can begin exploring the wishbone-shaped lake that bears its name. You can take a ferry to sightsee around the lake or visit one or more of the delightful destinations at the lake's center, Menaggio, Barena, and Bellagio. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you ever been to Milan? Did we miss any of your favorites? If not, do you think you'll ever get there? Let us know in the comments section below.